Alright guys, new video, how to replace valve cover gaskets and we're gonna work on 2010 Infiniti G37 Just by looking at it you could maybe see that there is some sign of uh, oil leak from from valve covers in my case this one and this spark plugs just get flooded with oil which caused the engine misfire I initially I was just thinking I might have bad ignition coils or something because I believe Chink Angel showed me first to do this one then this one in the middle so I decided to replace like three or four of my coils that's when I saw that this one and this one were completely flooded I drove, after replacing couple, replacing all spark plugs, I drove for about a month or so and then this fire started again. So this time we can actually replace the gaskets. And I decided while we do that, just since I'm working on them, I'm gonna also clean the uh, mass airflow sensors and we can also clean right here. So I'll start the car just to show you how, how it's running, running rough. So first you see service engine sunlight. Definitely running rough. And we're gonna use the computer too to see what engine code we do that. I've been using this computer for a while. Maxibink ML619. Very good. I used it before on a Porsche Boxer, was able to clear out some uh, airbag lights. But anyway, let's try this computer and see what it gives me. It looks like I found two codes. Random multiple cylinder misfire. Second one, it's some other issue that's I'll work on it later, not a big deal. So now it's random, but not even specific. So we're gonna have to take a bunch of stuff off. We'll do one thing at a time. And first thing we're gonna do is probably, yeah, first let's take this pipe holes, whatever they call, we're gonna take those off first and then we'll take off the manifolds. Just quick side note, what I got for, for this, red doesn't matter, RTV sealant, you'll need that. Or manifold manifold gasket this one was kind of expensive but it is original Nissan item you, just, you need to look at this I think it was about 25 30 bucks these two are identical but that's for the spark plugs and that's part for that and That's two gaskets for valve covers per side. One more thing I decided to get, maybe I didn't have to get it, but since for this work I'll need a 12mm deep socket wrench, I decided to get this decided to get this kit just because I think it's always good to have. I have a bunch of stuff, but I don't think I have deep socket range for all sizes so I decided to get that about 35 38 dollars on Amazon I almost forgot to mention since we'll be working on possibly some connectors some little bit of electricity I'm gonna disconnect my negative okay removing those eight millimeter on both sides Same 
working on this side. This one just popped up, I don't know how it's gonna be in your case. But this one's out and I'm gonna remove this side and this side. Again, on mine it came out pretty easy, maybe because I worked on it recently. But shouldn't be an issue. This side out. Again, you could see how filthy it is over there, so it definitely was leaking for some time. This doesn't look bad, at least on this side, but I'll still wash it, why not? And I'll clean this obviously later too. On this side, remove, actually don't remove, but loosen this one by a lot, 10 millimeter. Or, I might take it back, you actually have to take it off. I'll put it back here just so that I don't lose it. Okay, now this one, I'm gonna try to remove it all again too. Same thing, and now I can hold my camera and do this with one hand probably. <laughs> Have to use two hands. Just pull this out. I don't know if it should hold it or not, but I was able to just pull this out. And for this one, we're gonna use H5. There is total, obviously, four of them. Obviously remove all four. So as you can see it's off. I'm not sure yet how far if I have to disconnect some of those or not. I might have to take this one off, but not yet. Let me feel do it like this and we'll see what I need to do. Now we'll do same thing on the other side, remove four and move. Here is four bolts by the way, so we're gonna remove four from here and move it aside too. Again, you'll see if we have to disconnect it more or not, but for now, just do that. So, four moves from each side, there we go. Now we're gonna move this away. Again, right now, I'm just concerned, you dirty here, I'm definitely gonna have to clean it, but right now I'm more concerned about just removing this manifold from the top. Later on, you'll see we have to remove more holes or whatever else. But right now, I'm just focusing on this, because that's the first step. So I just lifted this up. This metal clamp. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Looks like it's enough room to get there as well. is gonna work easy here so this one's off let's see about this one off too I'm actually thinking of cleaning this manifold later on so actually I'm gonna take it off from here too should be very easy so why not So here is how you remove the manifold, gives you the order, and I'm sure installation will be the same. 
so I don't think it matters, but we're gonna remove it in those directions. So it's one, two, three, four. Like I say, make sure you have deep socket over here, you don't really need it. But on this one you will. So one, two, three, four. We'll remove those for now. Now five, six, seven, eight. So for this last one definitely need extension, another extension. There you go. So at least now it's moving a lot. Have to figure out what connections to remove in the back. It's definitely gonna be this one. Probably this one. This one. Remove those two bolts. This 10 millimeter wrench. So we will still be able to free that. Maybe here one more bracket and same thing here. Remove this one 10 millimeter bolt. Loosen this one. Easy. Now it should be able to come off. Almost actually found another one right there. Take it off too. Just keep in mind, unlike those two that were like bigger and without washer, that one has a smaller and a washer. And one more thing you have to remove this one. So now most of it is open. My advice is see how you can move stuff around. Do one at a time. For example, we'll do this one first. So we can move mo most of that stuff around. We'll still play around with wires here. But as you can see, we can clear it up a lot more. Which we're gonna do now. So now most of it is open. My advice is see how you can move stuff around. Do one at a time. For example, we'll do this one first. So we can move mo most of that stuff around. We'll still play around with wires here. But as you can see, we can clear it up a lot more. Which we're gonna do now. My One of my most favorite tools is 10 millimeter wrench. Just for places like that, you see how Need to move it out of this uh, bracket or whatever. We just use 10 millimeter wrench to push it in, and then you just remove it. We're gonna do same thing on this one. There you go. We'll do one right here as well. Use yeah, same thing with wrench. Down my middle right here to get this one off as well. And now, now I'm gonna unplug all those ignition coils. Maybe I broke one of the connectors right there. I thought it was just like those ones, but apparently this one I just had to slide it over. Left or right. Oh well. You'll see if it's something I can fix, but probably not. That shouldn't be a big deal. 
it's getting late so pretty much for today i'll just finish by remove one candle mirror right here i'll do it for this one and this one overnight i'll leave ignition coils inside just because i don't want some crap to get in there overnight so like i say i'll remove those two bolts and i'll continue tomorrow okay now it's next day and we're gonna work on removing this valve cover just Actually, before we do that, I'll clean those uh, throttle bodies. And what's interesting is I was gonna clear mass airflow sensors too. Went to four stores: Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, two Advanced Auto Parts. And apparently there is some kind of shortage. Couldn't find a single cleaner. Now what's good is whenever I'm done with this, week months later. I don't have to remove anything, I'll just remove those sensors and clean them, so not a big deal. So now I'll just spray, I'll clean the throttle bodies first and then I'll continue on valve cover. I'll just use curb choke cleaner for this. Okay, now it's done, we're gonna remove all ignition coils. It's interesting that this one actually look clean this time. So is this one. Now we're gonna remove all those bolts, 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it's ten, but we'll see. Those bolts are not tight at all, so now uh, removal, it doesn't matter in what order really you're doing it, maybe manual gonna tell you do it some specific way. In my opinion, it doesn't matter. But who knows? show you this one tough to reach but make sure you have enough different extensions whatever that's how I was able to reach it so now I removed pretty much all bolts there are three that I was able to loosen up but not completely remove 
I might have to get a magnet. I don't know if I have to get that far, but we'll see. Now I have to move this. Now use screwdriver for that. There we go. Have to put something between to get it. To there you go. Sure you heard it. So now there are two bolts of the crappy place that bother me. Have to remove them all. It'll be better if I can remove it completely, obviously. But to get the, to them, it's kind of crappy. Maybe it'll be a little bit helpful with this, we'll see. Got one out. And last one to go. Next I could I'll try to take this one off too. Well, it's obviously completely loose, so that one's not going to be an issue. Hmm. Looks like it's kind of working. I'm just manually... I think I'm going to remove it just in a bit. Obviously, it be a better placement but I just dropped it which means I'll have to eventually go look for it sucks but it is what it is okay and now I think I should be able to remove it well lifting this wire up higher Got a little bit more room there. Definitely sucked getting it out of there. And it will be kind of pain obviously to put it all back together. So what I'll do now is I'll just close the hood. I'm gonna start working on cleaning this one. I'll have to do it from I want to clean this side and then I want to obviously replace the gasket but first thing I want to do is just clean this portion and what I'll do on here is I'll close the hood just to prevent dirt and bunch of crap going in there and 
and actually good thing I noticed it look that's one of them second and you see the third one Just by looking at them, they'll look like they don't have too much oil in them, so I don't think I'll have to remove. I don't think I'll have to remove the spark plugs. Okay, so this step is done. Okay, so just by looking at this side, so can't say how they fell there exactly, but you see how this is kind of loose. This one completely broke off. I showed that one to you before. It's very tough, so it should be a bit more flexible. So actually, need some tools to take it off. If you don't have one of those, make sure you get them. That's very useful. I use it a whole bunch of times already on different cars, different problems. So now I'll just remove this one. be on this side so I'm gonna turn around on this yoga mat I'm gonna start cleaning this stuff I'm gonna try to get some little bit of shine to it make it look a little bit better If anyone cares what the name of the spray thing is pearl, but I don't want to spend too much time on trying to make it too shiny. Clearing it just enough, decent, you know, and then I'm gonna put more air thing to get some stuff out or places where I couldn't reach with the rag. <laughs> I'd say it looks decent. Do this one too. Now I'll work on this side. Again, I'm gonna use the same air thing to spray it. Just make sure there is no metal particles or some dirt. According to service manual, as far as I understood, you put RTV only on corners right here, over there, over there and over here, which I'm gonna work on this a little bit later for now, I'm gonna have to work on this, I guess I don't really need it, but I'll just put little bit here maybe it's gonna help it kind of hold it in place it's a little bit right there a little bit right there a little bit right there again it might help it hold in place or it might not do anything so I'll put this on, on the cover That's 
next step from the machine, the driver's side, gets a EY01B or whatever it is. Same thing that I'll do on this one, just that it might help me keep it more secure. And I'll put a little bit right there, a bit right there. Now I'm gonna attach the gasket. Everything looks nice, but I'll wait just a little bit, make sure it's secure just for a bit so that when I'm putting it back on, nothing gonna came out, come out. Well, let's dry it up. I'm gonna work on cleaning this, mostly just those four corners. Maybe a little bit in, in uh, more places, just clear and make sure there is no dirt. And I guess, I don't know if there is really need for it, but since service manual recommended, I'll put some right here. To be honest, I didn't wait for literally been five minutes. So I don't know how much it dried up or not, but I think I'll just put it back on. I don't wanna wait for too long, whatever. It's not good. Gonna make sure there won't be any crap like that because if I mess up, it's gonna be a huge fail. That's why, right here, I'm gonna double check before I actually move further. You're gonna have to probably keep doing that every step.
looks like it's in and I think it's in good I'm gonna use flashlight just to make sure you can still move it around if you want just to make sure gasket is in place I checked everywhere and it does look good I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna use this or not but pretty much it has you can pause the video for your referral that's the second one that's the one I'm working on now that's the one I'll work on next one first step you do it till 18 inch Pound, second step 72 inch per pound just make sure usually torque wrenches have have the measurements in feet not in inch that's why be careful and if you want to do that or just to use it like by your hand just make sure you don't over tight it so I'll start with just to find one of the cleanest ones I'm just gonna put this one right here not tight at all just to get it secured the second screw unfortunately it's kind of in a crappy position but it is what it is I'll do it just like I did the other one. I'm not gonna put it any. Just make sure it's uh, catching on the thread. And that's it. No more. Third one, right here. Same thing. Pretty much I barely just secured this one. Just remember the order is this one, the one in the middle, and goes that one, then this one, then it's gonna be this one, then this one, and I think this one, then this one. So after those, next one is that one all the way over there, then this one, then and this one and this one but I lost one so I'm gonna leave it like this for now till I find it under the car somewhere I'm gonna leave this one because I should be able to secure this just later on even when everything's up so now let's see if we could do the torque wrench thing just look at my torque wrench and I decided absolutely not it goes by five by five uh, inch No, by five foot and I need like 10 inch I don't want to risk it so I'll just use regular wrench just make sure do it it doesn't have to be tight at all just like this you don't have to do tight at all as soon as you get some pressure be good like now I have some pressure and I'll just leave it like that Okay, everything's tightened. So now I'm gonna just insert, kind of, you know, do some regular push stuff back. I'm gonna fix up this connecting stuff that I did here. Goes here. Put, don't forget to plug that connector back. Also good, now it's a good time to put back ignition coils. Actually, before I do that, oh, see that connector over there, the one I was painting this. 
gonna see if I can kind of sort of put it back. There you go. Okay, now ignition coils. Which very self-explanatory. Whatever you wanna do, but you might wanna try to plug them in before you actually put it, put them down. It's up to you. Plug this one in and then down. Okay, second one. Screw them all with 10 millimeter bolts. So it looks like this side is done. Off to this one. No, I don't even know where to start first. I guess right there is this line connector. Hopefully, you'll be able to move it away like this. Less things to worry about and we're gonna move this connector and this one to get it out of the way and then disconnect all ignition coils a little bit more room now we're gonna remove 10 millimeter bolts on all three ignition coils and remove the ignition coils seems like on that side everything's good for removal on that one but right here let's take this one on off and we'll see what we can do I remove this 12 millimeter bolt which allows me to move this whole thing a little bit away so should be good should be enough room to reach with that bolt have to this one right here have to push it out okay it's out and from what I've seen there should be nothing that would prevent the valve cover from coming out. So time to remove those bolts. Okay, all bolts removed. Same thing. We're gonna lift it up and hopefully it will work. So it's not moving initially, but that's why we have a screwdriver. Tuner now, and I'll just use the air. Now that side is clear, and I'll just do it over here as well. Make sure there is no dust, dirt, or whatever. Looks very good. So, just like before, put a little bit here. little bit in uh, spark plugs uh, tubes and then in four corners this one gonna go here And 
this one. I'm gonna go on top of this. Looks good. Then I'm gonna get to clean this one. Looks like there's some a uh, little bit of dirt probably when I was removing stuff right there. So I'll clean that and all the corners. We're gonna have some of that RTV sealant. I'm gonna take that off too. Try to put it on. Again, I'm gonna check every single place, make sure it stays secure. Looks good. And as always, the very first one that goes in gonna be the one in the middle. guys you're gonna have to look at the serious manual exact order about it's like one in the middle then it's like I think this one then that one then this one and this one I think that this and this and this and this and that and that just look at the manual or I think before this or there is gonna be a portion of the video where you'll see the exact order so like I told you before make sure you do not over I think it's very important. I worked on one car like years and years ago, like 10 years ago. And that's where I had to change the valve cover. And that was my mistake. I over tightened it. Two or three bolts. I was still able to make it work with three broken bolts. It was still be able. I was still able to hold it without leaking oil, but just make sure don't don't make a mistake, don't over tighten it. Okay, everything's done there. Now we're gonna secure this stuff, the 12, 12 millimeter, millimeter bolt. Actually, before we do that, right here. and 10 millimeter right there at the bottom. Now this one right here. Also 10 millimeter. And here gonna be 12. Here's gonna be 10. Now this thing gonna get plugged back in. 
actually before I do the rest, time to put ignition coil back in. I'm gonna secure obviously all of them, 10 millimeter bolts. And that's all three of them. So that portion is done. Now I'm gonna work on replacing this manifold gasket. Which first thing I'll do here is I'll just clean clean whatever's here. Just do a little cleaning on this stuff. Do I have to? No, not at all, but why not since it's open? You can remove this one. Should be noted that it looks really good. So I replaced it when the car has about 125,000. Still looks good. So I don't know if you want to replace it or not. Probably since you're gonna be there anyway. If you need the part number, right here. Okay, time to put it back. There you go. So what we'll do, what we'll start with is securing everything to the back. So bracket on the passenger side, you'll need 10 millimeter bolt with a washer. And make sure it's not going to this top one, the one slightly at the bottom. So the top one gonna be for this other thing. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, and it's very tough to get camera shoot everything, but that's this piece has two 10 millimeter bolts goes right there, and those bolts are without washers, right here. Finish up with a 10 millimeter wrench. On the passenger side, one thing that left is this right here. Plug it in. And I guess I'll do that now. 12 millimeter, millimeter nut. See it right there. Just gonna drop it in. Be careful, obviously, don't lose it there. Gonna find another one. Here's another one. This one gonna go to the front. So for one in the back. Extension 12 millimeter deep socket. Actually, I'm gonna have to double check. I think there's also a combination for the money falls or specific order. I have to look that up. Okay, here is the money fold.
silver one two three four five six seven eight so go by that order there's also torque specification specs but i don't know if you want to use that or not up to you okay so we'll drop those in this tool again okay that's secured now we'll do this one for some reason I was able to secure without removing or moving this one further away but oh well if it works it works same thing we'll do right here Okay, now a couple things over here, same bracket thing right here, one with a washer, looks like it's going to be here in the back, here it is, we're going to do like this, and this connector goes right here, and I'll just Secure this one more this time of middle. Now we're gonna connect those two vacuum lines. Took me one minute to figure out which one goes where, but when you take it apart, if you wanna put them separately or mark them, it shouldn't get them confused. You could do that as well, but shouldn't be too tough to figure out. like that the same thing on this side Let's see this one goes in right here And then plugs in here. Hmm, I am tired. And good thing is we almost done. So now we're gonna connect the throttle body very simple four screws G5 I believe okay so actual size is not G5 it's H5 I guess hex or whatever that stuff means I guess I'll finish this side first, why not? I'm gonna remove this screw. Now remember, this thing have to go to that opening. That opening at uh, those cover. Okay, two sides went in. That one in two. Now I'm gonna put screw here. Gonna 
gonna get 10 millimeter. For this one I'll need 8 millimeter. And for this one, eight as well. First one is we're gonna screw these four bolts, this throttle body, just like on the other side. We're gonna install this one. Let's figure out which way it goes, I think. Not like this. Like this. I'm not gonna put the final top cover yet. Probably keep it like that for a week or so, just to make sure everything's fine. I'll be able to look at if there are any leaks. As you can see, definitely make sure your gasket cover, your valve cover gaskets are tight and there's no issues, because if you made a mistake somewhere, you'd have to take it all back out just to fix it. So now I'm gonna plug in the battery. Okay, everything's done. Like I said before, I messed up and lost screw one bolt right here. I'll have to move the car and hopefully I'll be able to find it under the car. If not, I might have to order one. This is what it is. So now I'm gonna start the car and use flashlight to make sure nothing is leaking and everything's running smoothly. <laughs> 